everybody, to another episode of Pass the Wire TV. I am John Staten. I'm here with my new co-host, Jeff Metz, from beautiful Southern California. Uh, we're going to be uh, working as a team, so to speak, on our, our, our YouTube videos, bringing you the best of the sport of kings, horse racing uncensored. We're going to try and cover everything. So we welcome thoughts, comments, feedback, and, and, and subjects that you'd like us to talk about. Jeff, happy to be working with you, talking to you, and having you on the show. Hey, thanks very much. You know, it's uh, been great to meet you and get to know you, and I look forward to uh, what we're going to put together here. Um, you and I both have a good passion for the horse racing game. Uh, we come from a little different angles, but um, I look forward to working together. I think it's a good mix because I always tell people, well, you know, from my perspective, not being a horseman, this is how I see it, but you as a trainer and being a horseman, you are a lot of times going to have a completely different perspective and probably educate me to a lot of things that, you know, appear one way from the front side and appear a completely different way on the back side. So you're kind of like a, a window um, to the, to, to, to the back side that, uh, you know, people in the grandstand don't get to see very often. So that I think is a, is a good thing. Yeah, you know, oftentimes people think, oh, well, you're a trainer, you know, when the horses are going to win, or you know, when your horses are going to win, and you know, all the right. jockeys, and you know, your counterpart trainers. And so you say, hey, uh, you know, who's going to win today? But unfortunately, uh, if you talk to uh, nine out of 10 trainers, they say they're going to win, and then oftentimes they don't. But we know with horse racing, there's trips, there's uh, post positions, a lot of bad luck that can come in our way. But I, uh, one of my standard answers that I can tell you is, hey, this horse is going to need a race, so that would be a play against. Or, you know, this horse is training really good. I got him right where I want him. He needed the last race or something like that. So if your horse is going in as best he can, then it's just up to the racing gods at that point. If we can get a little luck in the, in the races, then I think, um, you know, they're going to run one, two, three. And I really like uh, when I can, you know, I don't give out information and I don't bet on my own horses, by the way. But whenever a horse is uh, at a good price and you know he's training good, that's when I feel good to, you know, tell owners or friends that, you know, hey, this horse is training really good and he's 20 to one on the morning line. You know, I, I, I completely respect that. And I always joke with people, you know, I never ask a trainer if they like their horse because, I always felt that asking a trainer about their own horse is like asking somebody about their child or their kid. You know, they, 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 they're going to look at it in the most favorable or, pos or, or positive light that they possibly can, you know. And you said something, hey, this horse is, uh, you know, going to need a race. To me, as a, as, a, as, a, as a better, that is far more valuable information telling me that than telling me that you like your horse or you think your horse is going to win. If you tell me, hey, my horse is going to need a race or he's been off for a while or something, I'm like, okay, that's one less that I, I have to worry about. And we both know that they can jump up and win too because how many times have trainers put a horse in to fill a race or thought a horse would need a race and all of a sudden the gate opens and there they go, you know? How many times have you seen, we'll use Bob Baffert, he's always a good example, but how many times have you seen a trainer of his stature, he'll have two in the race and the higher odds comes in and wins. I mean, right. I, it seems like it happens nine out of 10 times, but uh, but it's like you said, there's different reasons why um, the bigger odd horse will run uh, or outrun his counterpart. And a lot of times, uh, as a trainer, as we get to know our horses, you know, maybe they don't like the post position they have that day or, you know, a substitute jockey, one had to fly out of town to ride a race. So we have a new pilot and he doesn't quite know the horse as well as we'd like. So there's all these little nuances that come into play. And, um, but like you said, when, when they do win, that's when it all comes together and, um, and, you know, racing luck and good fortune and having the horse in the right spot and just everything coming together. That's, that's a good thing. One thing I'll ask as a trainer, which I always, I, 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 I'm always interested in, and, and, and different trainers I've known over the years have a different philosophy about it. Do you like when the rider who is going to ride your horse in the race works the horse out and gets on him in the morning, or do you prefer an exercise rider or the riders that you like to use, you know, your, your, your morning riders, exercise riders, stay on the horse and the rider gets on him for the race for the first time, or, or only when, when he's actually racing? Yeah, um, the, the, the best scenario in that case is if the rider that's going to ride the horse 
uh, works the horse at least a time or two. It doesn't have to be the workout right before the race, but if they can work a one or two or three works before the race, so they get to know the horse and they can give us as trainers feedback and say, you know, we should change the bit or we should add blinkers or something like that. That's where, you know, whenever you have kind of a rider that you work with quite a bit and you trust them and they trust you, it's, it's all part of the training process. So when we get to the race, hopefully everything's easy for them. You know, uh, they don't all of a sudden say, boy, this horse didn't like the dirt. You know, sometimes you don't get as much dirt kickback in the morning because there's only one or two horses working together, or maybe some horses will break off in front of you. And so the horse gets some dirt kickback. And so that's one of the things you'll see with first time starters when they get that big field of eight, 10, 12 horses. And when they start getting all that excitement around them, that's when, um, you know, uh, having a rider know the horse is pretty helpful. And then you get a lot of feedback post race. And so you can say, oh, let's do this different. Let's, uh, you know, I think this horse wants to go to the lead, wants to take back. But as far as working the horse in the morning, I think it's advantageous to have the, the jockey work the horse because they can get to know him. And I, I've had owners even say, oh, you know, has so-and-so worked the horse in the morning? And it's, uh, Sometimes they have to take another mount, you know, that's they always got to get the best mount possible and their agents are doing that for them. But uh, so you try and prep and say, hey, we're going to run in this race. We'd like to have you work them one or two works before he runs, get to know him. And that's the ideal scenario. Sometimes it doesn't happen. And sometimes you end up switching jockeys or like I said, maybe one's out of town and you have to have a different rider. But so you end up getting a different rider and you give them as much information, the new rider, and you'll say, hey, this horse, uh, you know, has a light mouth. You know, this filly's a little funny. Try to be real quiet with your hands because, you know, uh, whatever that you know about the horse, you want to let them know. But that when they do get to work them, you get that feedback back and forth. And I think that makes for a good team and a good blend. Yeah, you see, I, I would agree in that, you, you know, is obviously logical and makes sense. But the reason I, I brought it up and asked you is that, you know, I had two different trainers at two different points in my life tell me um, something different. And, and, and they, they, they both said the same thing. They were like, you know what? I'd rather the jockeys don't even work my horse. I'd rather my exercise riders work my horse because I don't want the jockey getting on the horse, have any preconceived idea, think he knows the horse better than me. So, you know, so this, think he this, can do what he wants to do. I'd rather leg him up and tell him, listen, do exactly what I'm telling you. This is what the horse likes and just, you know, follow, follow, follow my lead, so to speak. And I know we talked about this show being uncensored. So I'm going to be candid here for a minute. And one of the reasons that you might not want a jockey to ride that horse is he's a little stiff. He's a little sore. He's going to feel better on race day because he's going to have butte and Lasix and everything in his system that just helps him feel a little better on race day, adrenaline and everything that goes that way. So sometimes it's not advantageous to have the jockey work the horse because he's going to say, oh, man, this is a little stiff. I don't want to ride him or I'm not going to ride him very hard. And so that would be a scenario or an angle where you don't want the horse to say, you know what, this horse is funny going, is a funny mover. Um, so, so that's the other side of the coin. But if you said what I would like, I would like the horse to the jockey to know the horse and the horse to you know respond well to the jockey so that we go in with our best almost like schooling in the paddock schooling in the gate you don't want a, that surprise on race day you know the jockey came back and gave him a test ride and said oh i kind of got to know him but he didn't let him run so that's right. why i think it'd be better to uh you know find out in the morning and that's one of those things you said as a player you don't know who worked the horse last time you know you right. see 102 and four on the workout was it whipping and driving? Was it uh, in hand going really easy? And one of the things they started doing in Southern California is they started videoing the workouts right. and uh, XBTV will show you the workouts. So you can kind of make your own decision. Was that horse being asked at the end or was he just sitting easy in company by himself? Whatever. So uh, that's another angle that that's helpful to the players as well as some of the other tools that, you know, that we have for handicap. Yeah, no, for sure. And now, you know, more than ever, there, there are workout reports available where, you, you know, clockers that are out in the morning will tell you, you know, how a horse worked and, uh, you know, sometimes even who he worked with or who was on him and, and things like that. And all, all, all that information is valuable to me as, as, as a better. I want all the information I can get and let me decide what's important and, 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 and make a decision based on that. Some people say it's information overload. There's too much information. I don't subscribe to that. I'm like, 
give it all to me and I'll decide what's important and what I want to, you know, base my, 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 my wagers on, which what, brings one me of the, to the next. Go ahead. Yeah. One of the angles that I really like, um, and, and sometimes just like you said, if you want to streamline it and, and make it more simple, one of the things that I go with is uh, jockey trainer combos. When you see a go-to rider for a certain trainer, that's kind of a tell sign for me when they put that jock on that they use a lot. That is, um, that's as valuable to me as, um, you know, some of the other stuff, like you said, you can get a little overload with all the uh, past performances, right. the numbers, buyer numbers, rag numbers, third graph numbers. So, um, but, and, and then just watching the races, I know you watch a lot of races and a lot of replays and, you know, horses get troubled trips and, and then you got to remember that for next time. And when I have a horse that I'm training and they get a troubled trip, same thing. It's like, boy, that horse got blocked. He never got to let him run. And you'll have this fifth or sixth place finish that was better than it looked. And I know that's hard to say. And when you have to call the owner and say, really, it was better than it looked, you kind of have to explain and hopefully they see the replay and they see what you saw. But um, right. that means, okay, hey, next time we run, we get a clear trip. The horse wants to run, just got tons of traffic and didn't get to run. Yeah, and, and you know, in, in, in the game today with the information overload out there that's available for, for, for people, and there's just a ton of, of handicapping information and products out there. For me, it's all about getting an edge over the next guy. So if we're all looking at the same information, where you get that edge becomes very tricky and, and, and vital. I'll trust my own eyes better than anything that I read or anything that anybody wants to sell or give or tell me. So to me, my most valuable information comes from watching replays and picking up on things that other people may not have seen. A horse that's between horses and I can tell is uncomfortable and the rider might be uncomfortable and he doesn't want to go through and he waits and waits and waits. Before you know it, the race is over and he just never got a yeah. chance to, to show his best. And I, I make and keep notes on that kind of stuff. And those are the horses I look for and, and really like to play and look to, you know, capitalize on when they run back, if they're running back in a good spot and the race sets up well for them. Because, you know, sometimes you see that and everything looks great. And then the horse runs next time and you're excited to see the name in the entry and you look at the field and you're like, wow this race is a lot tougher than that other one, you know, or, or something like that, you know? So it all, it all has to come together, but the replays, in my opinion, are where you will find the best information and, and, and possibly information that means a lot to you and, and, and to the way you view a race and you want to wager uh, than, than someone else. And that, that, that's just, yeah, that's, and um I don't want to tip my hand too much on the show here, but uh, as a trainer, when I get one of those trips where you're blocked and you don't get to run and it's better than looked, I feel it's a chance to drop down a level or two and take advantage of that situation. Sure. You know, your horse sure. can run in an easier race and get a little confidence up. And, it, you know, you're oftentimes you're not going to lose the horse via claim because, you know, it just wasn't it on paper. It's not going to look good. So a lot of times I'll tell owners, we can drop down a notch or two. I don't feel any, I, I think we're safe. We're not going to get claimed. Some horses, you don't mind if they get claimed because you're still going to make money and others you don't want to lose because they're just getting good or you're just getting to know them or something like that. But, uh, but I, I do think it is a training tool that just like you said, I think you could gauge um, if you're running the same level or, or one or two levels down, I think that's a nice uh, chance to do it. Absolutely. Now, the, the news in, in, uh, on the betting side of the game uh, this week is uh, something I mentioned to you before the show started. Uh, Naira, the New York Racing Association, made an announcement that they were going to ban or at least on paper ban um, CAW, which is computer assisted wagering, which is done by the um, high rebate betting syndicates. And they are going to exclude them from their Empire Six, which is now a, a mandatory payout every day. So it's it's a, it's still a twenty cent wager in the jackpot format, but not the jackpot. They pay it out every day, which I actually like that idea better than the jackpot. Um, but they are also, you know, banning the syndicates and banning the computer assisted wagering, which is big news and and and, and could potentially have. A very big impact on the industry and, and as, 
has that um has that passed or is that yes, up? That, it, it that, did pass okay that's, yes, that's what they're doing. They're, they're, gotcha. they're banning them from that particular wager now where it gets interesting is uh, you, you know, the betting syndicates are probably the most misunderstood um, aspect of, of horse racing and, and, and wagering by most people. So everybody, no, well, not everybody, but mo most bettors and players are applauding this because they think that the computer betting syndicates uh, have an unfair advantage. I think that they have an advantage but I do not believe that it's an unfair advantage. I don't believe they're breaking the rules. And I know that they don't have access to a lot of the information that some people think that they have access to. For example, there are many people that think that on the jackpot wagers, they know the unplayed combinations to allow them to bet the single ticket and hit it, okay? It's not true. And it's, it's, it's actually not even possible when you think about it, because if you're a betting syndicate and I'm a betting syndicate, and there's another betting syndicate and we all have the unplayed combinations and we want to steal that pool unless we're colluding with each other that Jeff, this week is yours. Next week is his. And the week after that is mine. We're all going to bet the last second, those unplayed combination and there goes the single ticket. So, yeah, I, you know, I, you know the way I see it is um, you got some big players that are putting a lot of money into the pool and obviously if four or five guys go to the track and put a hundred dollars each together, four or $500 ticket. That's nothing compared to this, you know, the syndicates that are up in the tens of thousands of dollars when they're talking a million dollars that they can win 10,000 is a, it's not that big of an investment. And for them to have these computer programs that help them. Uh, but I would think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong with these people being banned from uh, being in there, aren't the size of the pools going to be a lot less. The size of the pools are going to be a lot less. Uh, but a lot of betters think that, you know, those guys win so much that even though the pools will be less, the payoffs are going to be bigger. Mm. That remains to be seen. I do believe that the 50 cent and 20 cent minimum wagers, even though they drive more money into the pools, they do reduce the payouts because more people win. And that will probably happen even in this mandatory pick six without the computer wagers in there. But I think that and, I, I, you, you know, I understand Naira's trying to do something that's good for the game. But I think it's a very tricky subject for everybody, including horsemen, and I'll tell you why. The computer syndicates make up probably anywhere from 25 to 35, maybe even a, a little bit higher than that percentage of the overall handle in the, in, in, in the sport across the board. Now, you tell me as a horseman, what do you think will happen if our handle, we're struggling now. Okay, and purses are good in a lot of places. We're still struggling as an industry financially. Okay, what happens to our game and horsemen if we tomorrow kick out all the betting syndicates, say, you know what, just like Las Vegas three out of the blackjack tables, we're throwing you out of horse racing. Yeah, not 30%. Not... You lose 30% of the overall handle across the board. Does our game survive? You tell me, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I think anytime you lose 30% of your business, I don't, I don't care what kind of business you're in that that's going to, that's going to hurt. Right. Um, these guys are winning quite a bit, but on the horseman side of things, the handle is where is what drives the engine. The betters drive the handle, the handle drives the, the horseman's purses. And so uh, my personal opinion is I think it's going to hurt. I, I, I think it can't not hurt. And I think that a lot of people that are, are, are yelling to get them out and, and, and saying, hopefully this is the start of, of, of a trend are going to be in for a rude, rude awakening. You know, I, 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 I wrote an article about it on, on the site on Pass the Wire where I, I, I kind of touched base on, on my philosophy about it. I say you have to play the game in the stadium that the game is in. Okay, they're in there. Find a way to beat them. There are ways to beat them. Find a way to beat them. Find a way to play with them. You, you, you know, cream rises to the top. And, you, you know, I want everybody in the pool. I want a, a, a big pool with a lot of money in it. And like, 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 like we were talking about, you know, everybody like says, oh, you go after those mandatory pick sixes. Okay, you think that. I think differently. I said, you know what? Saturday, they're having a mandatory payout at San Anita. Okay. 
and they're talking about it. Oh, we may get 5 million. We may get 5 million. So people are playing it during the week. But are those big sharks that like to bet 20 and $30,000 tickets, $40,000 tickets in combination of going for the 5 million in there today? <laughs> Probably not. Today's the day I'll take a shot for five or six or $800 and maybe snake out that million dollar single ticket when everybody is sleeping. It's been done before. I've done it before. And it's an angle that a lot of people are not paying attention to. So you can't tell me there's not ways to beat these guys at their own game. Another way that you can beat them is when, you, you know, you're not the only winner. Okay. If you're spending 10 or 20,000 on uh, a pick six that if you're not the only ticket and you get a lot of chalk or a reasonable secret that's only going to pay 15, 20, or 30,000, and I can out handicap you or now play you and hit that same ticket on a $200 or $400 investment, who's the winner? We're both getting the same 30,000, cost me 400 or 600 to get it, cost you 10, 20,000 to get it. You can yeah. take your 10 <laughs> rebate and add it to that. I'm still coming out better than you. Yeah, so, a much better ROI. <laughs> you, you know, and, and this is just one thing about pick six. There are other races and other wages and other, other avenues to kind of be okay with them being in, in, in the pools and having access to what they have access to, um, which is not, as I said before, unplayed combinations. They, they don't have access to that. But they have access to the pools and everything that 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 we have the only difference is they have computer models that they invest a lot of money in that can pull that information give it to them in easy to read format look for things at the press of a button that they want to look for in a program to look for and make those wages at a press of a button instantly okay in multiple wages so my question to naira would be this you say that they're not allowed in these pools. So you're going to restrict computer assisted wagering from the pools. Okay. Does that mean you're going to restrict all types of file upload wages or just the known computer assisted wagering? Because there's a couple of ways around that. Okay. And let's say they say, yeah, no computer wagering at all. No file uploads, nothing manual wages each at a time. Okay. So instead of starting at 30 seconds to post with all my combinations at the press of a button. Now I start with three or four minutes to post and I make some manual, manually. The next member of my team, Jeff, he makes some manually. You make some manually and we're, we're, we're still in there anyway. You're not going to keep these shops out of that pool if they want to be in it. Mm -hmm. They may stay out now because it's not worth their time. The pools are not that big and there's a bunch of other wagers out there. But if they want to go after that or it is a big enough jackpot in that you know, pool, it's not mandatory, they pay it out. I mean, it's mandatory, they pay it out every day. But if they have a big enough pool in there one day, where they want to go for it, they're going to be in there whether they're quote, banned or not. So sounds great. <laughs> but is it really great? I don't know the answer to that. And I, I have a couple of questions along those lines and get your opinion on it. So Naira, so you can bet on Naira bets. So if you're betting Gulfstream Park or Santa Anita on Naira bets, are they going to block these from doing what they're doing? And are these computer assisted syndicates also betting, say, Santa Anita and Gulfstream Park and Oakland, these, these big tracks yes. with big pools? So I Absolutely. think that that money that Naira is going to lose, I think these syndicates will still spend the money. They're just going to spend it in the other venues. That's 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 correct. That would be correct. They're not going to not spend it. They're just going to bet it in, 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 in other areas where they, where they can yeah. bet it. And, and you know, my, my, my position is that if they want to bet it at Naira, they're going to bet it there too. They just yes. may bet it different way, you know? different way. Right. And yeah. even if you, even if you ban the syndicate account, like let's say, you know, that's a syndicate account that comes from a big rebate shop and we're not taking your bets in, 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 in anymore. You're not going to convince me that these guys don't have other accounts <laughs> and that they don't have their own individual accounts and they don't have other people that I mean, you're yeah. not going to keep them out of the pool if they want to be in there. It's just not something that you can police. Yeah. So, you, you know, the way the way to negate that is not is, is not what they're doing. And, I, you know, I respect Naira for trying to do something that they probably believe is good for the industry. I just don't know, A, that it is good for the industry. And I don't know that it's something that 
is more than something that really just sounds good and it's going to make a lot of you know smaller betters and even some bigger betters happy as opposed to something that really is solid and can be done and and and, and is truly good for the game you you know how horse racing is a lot of times um people businesses organizations states governments what have you they have to do something to keep the peace and so by doing something like you said you're not going to keep them out but they're going to have to do it a different way but that for lack of a better term that smoke screen of saying hey here's what we're doing for you and it looks good to the player or the smaller player that's going to get in that pool and they're hoping that okay well we're going to you know we're going to play naira more because they're taking these big syndicates out when in fact they may be taking them out in one direction but they're going to uh, find another way in and hopefully you know uh, hopefully it all works out i i understand both sides i understand naira right. side <laughs> trying to do the best thing and trying to let keep the little guy in the game just like small owners keeping them in the racing game but you're trying to keep the betters you don't want to like push them out and they'll say we never have a chance because we're too small there's not enough of us and right. so uh, and, and i agree with that 100 percent. i think i think you, you know yeah, yeah, you, you have to try and make changes, and you have to do what you, you know what what you believe is right, and you know. I'm, and, I'm, and that's I'm not to, that. I just, and that's not to say that they don't uh, reverse that later on down the road and say, you know, we tried it. It just it uh, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But you know, you you try things, and sometimes they work well, and and sometimes they don't, or they backfire. And I guess we'll just have to see how it plays out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Interesting weekend in, 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 in racing. You know, we're coming into the derby season. Uh, yeah. We've got the preps coming up. Yeah, they got, a, they got a prep this weekend at Tampa Bay. Uh, do you have anybody you like out of Tampa Bay Downs this weekend? I, I do. There's a, there's a, I, actually, I've got a pretty strong opinion on a horse at, at, at the Sam Davis. Uh, so I'm either going to look really smart or really, really fool, foolish <laughs> after Saturday. But there's a horse running, um, I think Known Agenda is his name. It's a Todd Pletcher horse. And they've got him six to one on the morning line. And if he's six to one, I'll line up and bet him all day long. I, I don't think he's going to be six to one. Uh, I, I, that would literally, in my opinion, be a gift. But he, he he's very interesting on paper to me. Um, I liked his debut. It was a very, very live race. Uh, I think he ran ran to a, a horse named Highly Motivated, which is a pretty fast Chad Brown into mischief sprinter horse. I don't have the past performances in front of me, so I'm going off memory. And then he ran um, to Greatest Honor. He ran a good race to Greatest Honor, who came back and won, won, won in Florida. And then he caught a sloppy track where he didn't run run that well over at Aqueduct in the, in the Remsen. And uh, I'm willing to forgive that sloppy track run. Uh, he's now first time three-year-old at, 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 at Tampa going around the ground. He's a curling out of a man that her name was Byrama. That was, she was, she was a pretty talented mare. I remember seeing her run, uh, a bunch of times and she was diversified. She could run on, 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 on the turf and the dirt. I believe, I don't believe she might've been a stake winner on both, but definitely competed in stakes on both surfaces. Yeah. And I, I, I like him a lot. I think he's going to run really, really well. And John Velasquez rides him. And, you know, that would have not been so strange a couple of years back because <laughs> you said before about main guys, you know, Johnny yeah. was Pletcher's main guy for years. But yeah. the last year or two, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, Luis Saez is probably riding most of his horses right now. Uh, Irad Ortiz rides a lot of them. Jose Ortiz rides some. And, you know, since Johnny split with Angel Cordero and went with Ron Anderson, he rides... For Pletcher a lot less but he still does ride some good ones and I'm sure that they're still pretty tight you know and uh, I'm sure if there's a really nice one in the barn and Johnny wants to ride him or you know he winds you know he can you know maneuver himself onto that onto that horse so I like the fact that Johnny's riding him I like the fact that he's willing to go to Tampa to ride him and uh, the way the race shapes up, there's enough pace in there to set him up from coming, you know, off the pace. And I think, uh, I think he's the winner for sure. I mean, the, the one horse I'm afraid of, and I don't want to say afraid because I don't really bet afraid, but the one horse that I'm watching is Patrick Bean Cohn has a horse in there that's run two good races on the grass and is running first time on the dirt. So that's always a question mark for me. Uh, he did know, that last year. 
Yeah, Patrick, Patrick yeah. Biancone won that race last year. So same yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Sol Volante with a turf horse, you know. Yeah. So exactly. Now that's the kind of thing. Perfect example. The computer models, no matter mm -hmm. how good of a computer model you build, it's not going to know what you just said. Gotcha. Yeah. It's not going to pick that up. You know, because it's a perfect chance. I always say when you have a good three year old at this time of year, they can route. Oh, anything could happen because there are so many derbies around and derby preps, you know, around the country. You got the Ohio Derby and the Indiana Derby and you name it. But getting back to your horse this weekend, um, I, I really like Todd Pletcher and his his operation. You know, um, I think when you have that many horses, yeah, you have a go to guy with some of the young riders that are doing well now. And uh, but, you know, like you said, Johnny's ridden for him a lot and he's going back. They have a lot of history together and he trusts him a lot. So uh, I think, uh, you know, why not go to somebody that, you know, uh, even as you're an older rider, you still got that fire in your belly and you still want to win those races. And if you have a chance to get a horse on the derby trail, you're going to ride hard. Trust me. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, I think we can pretty much call it a wrap for, for show number one. What do you think? That sounds great. You know, hey, it's always good to get the first one uh, under your belt and, uh, you know, work together. And I think it's only going to get better from here. Absolutely. We're going to try and come up with some real interesting things to talk about. Uh, and, and, and fortunately for us, this sport always, always, always gives you something interesting to talk about. There's always a lot going on and a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff happening out there. And a lot just of different like a, stuff. Just like a trainer, things happen moment to moment, hour to hour. <laughs> you get Absolutely. the highs and lows. So news is Absolutely. always happening. So uh, hopefully we can bring some of that to you and give you our opinion on it. And uh, looking forward to future shows down the road. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And any, any, any comments, feedback, suggestions, uh, subjects you want to hear us talk about, send it our way. We'd love to, love to hear it. We're sure we can, we can get it in there. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Ciao. This has reached the starting gate. It's post time. Cold front, the favorite comes forward. Heather into the stretch. Cold front, foot to the tent. Cold front does it again. Back at the field of the Amsterdam.